for a free two-hour ebook audiobook titled 12 Easy Ways Pilots Get in Trouble, visit avtutorials.com. Now, let's join Stephen Russ. Welcome to Quick Pilot Topics, episode number four. I'm Steve. I'm an airline pilot, flight instructor, flight engineer, a previous examiner, and an A&P mechanic. I'm joined today by my brother, Russ, and as always, he's got awesome questions about flying, so let's get to it. Russ, fire away. So, I know CFIT is a hot-button issue in general aviation. What are we talking about when we say CFIT? Well, CFIT, uh, that stands for Controlled Flight into Terrain. It occurs when an airworthy aircraft is flown under the control of a qualified pilot into terrain, water, or obstacles, with inadequate awareness on the part of the pilot of the impending collision. So pilots are flying perfectly good aircraft into terrain or obstacles without their knowledge? Yeah, I mean, that right there, you, you said it perfectly. That is the essence of CFIT. Holy cow. So can you give some examples of CFIT scenarios? Sure. Uh, we'll talk about VFR-only pilots operating in marginal VFR or even IFR conditions. There's something called scud running. It's when a pilot operating VFR continues flight in an attempt to stay below a lowering ceiling in an attempt to stay visual. The term scud refers to low-laying clouds that can exist beneath other cloud layers. Such scud is usually very low altitude, so the term scud running implies that the pilot is flying among the scud clouds. Unfortunately, the presence of low visibility in flight within clouds at such low altitude uh, usually results in a collision. And if that isn't bad enough, there have been many nighttime scud running crashes. Or even overwater scud running has occurred where the lack of a horizon and features has possibly caused vertigo to the pilot and subsequent loss of situational awareness. That sounds pretty bad. So why would a pilot take a risk and perform scud running? A lot of us would like to know the answer to that question. Um, one common thing is the pilot might have what's called get homeitis, and this refers to a pressing continuation of the flight. Rather than making an early decision to land somewhere safely, the pilot continues, thinking that they just have a little more to go and it'll all work out okay. In other cases, the pilot might have an inadequate understanding of the weather situation and the hazards of scud running in general. Even though it's taught fairly widely and commonly, there are still going to be those pilots who have weak understanding of the issue. There's also the issue where some pilots think that the regulations just don't apply to them. Yes, there are cloud clearance and visibility regulations for each class of airspace. If a pilot thinks that these rules are for weaker pilots, they may push into scud running conditions. And this is a very dangerous attitude. So... Scud running has been going on for a long time. What are the specific hazards of scud running? Well, since visibility is so low in a scud running situation, often a pilot will have very little time to recognize a tower or terrain before they run into it. It may boil down to mere seconds, and a pilot might not be prepared to react. Another issue is that there are more towers and man-made obstructions today than ever before. We're talking cell phone towers, wind generators, and more high power tension lines are installed, making low altitude operations really hazardous. What can a pilot do to prevent scud running? Good question. First, a pilot really has to be aware of what it is and the dangers of doing it. A pilot also has to have prior scud running accident knowledge. The mere knowledge of how and why other pilots made poor in-flight decisions is a really valuable learning tool that will hopefully deter pilots from making decisions to go scud running. Okay. And uh, even when deteriorating weather conditions are first encountered, a pilot has to have the discipline to turn around if necessary and land somewhere safe. It's a very conservative action that must be taken. Mm -hmm. The pilot uh, additionally has to obtain a current and thorough weather brief before departing. They have to pay close attention to all the meteorological hazards. Uh, finally, I'd say the pilot has to conduct thorough flight planning, including a sectional chart review of terrain and obstacles so that they know what's out there. Okay. So that's a really good question, and we appreciate everybody listening. We hope you join us on the next episode of Quick Pilot Topics. 
Visit avtutorials.com for a free two hour ebook audiobook titled 12 Easy Ways Pilots Get in Trouble. Remember to listen next week and happy flying. <laughs>